Welcome to EasyLM Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be learning on chlorine and its compounds and today we are going to be looking at hydrogen chloride and we are going to be looking at the preparation of hydrogen chloride. In this case it's basically a preparation of the hydrogen chloride gas. Of course later on we will look at how also the acid is produced in that scale. So hydrogen chloride is produced in the laboratory by the reaction of concentrated sulfuric acid with a salt. Uh, this salt we use immediately is sodium chloride. So we shall heat the mixture as you can see in the diagram. So we have the concentrated uh, sulfuric acid being poured in the dropping funnel in the round bottomed flask where we have the common salt which is sodium chloride and then the reaction occurs and it's passed through concentrated sulfuric acid so this concentrated sulfuric acid acts in two ways it absorbs um any water uh so it dries uh the, the the gas and then the gas is collected the gas can either be collected or dissolved in water to form a solution so this tube can be changed depending on the product you want to get so when you look at a reaction uh concentrated sulfuric acid will react with sodium chloride to form sodium hydrogen sulfate and hydrochloric gas remember when we were talking about um, sulfate and sulfite ions we said that sulfuric six acid is formed by the reaction of sulfite uh, sulf sulfur six oxide in water to form sulfuric acid and then this sulfuric acid can react with metal ions or ammonium ions by either uh, replacing the hydrogen fully to form sulfate or replacing the hydrogen partially to form hydrogen sulfate and in this case this is where now the application comes in so you see the hydrogen the sulfuric acid react to sodium chloride it doesn't dis replace fully it just replaces only one hydrogen at atom so it forms sodium hydrogen sulfate and hydrochloric acid so if we were to look at the ionic equation, it's the hydrogen ions in sulfuric acid that react to sod chloride ions in sodium chloride to form hydrochloric gas. So some of the properties of hydrogen chloride gas is that it's colorless with the irritating pageant smell. And this is a very common thing with most gases. And the reason why it's this way is because of its acidic nature. So when it reacts with water, it forms hydrochloric acid, which is the one that causes that irritating feeling, especially when breathed in. It's slightly denser than air, uh, around like one and a quarter times. So it makes it to be collected by downward delivery or upward displacement of air. It's usually very soluble in water and it fumes strongly in moisture forming hydrochloric acid deposit. This, this, this makes it also to be very dangerous, especially when we are dissolving it in water. That's why we usually use the funnel also to allow the solution to happen. So it increases the surface area for the solution and also prevents that suck back. But also it prevents the formation of these um, fumes. So the aqueous solution is known as hydrochloric acid and it completely ionizes in aqueous solution. So when hydrochloric acid, uh, gas dissolves in water, it forms hydrochloric aqueous solution. This dissociates in ion to form hydrogen ions and chloride ions. The solution usually has acidic property so it helps in the same in the following property it helps to turn blue litmus paper red and then red litmus paper remains red and then when it reacts with metals it liberates hydrogen gas and it is with certain metals like zinc magnesium and iron so hydrochloric acid does not react with metals below hydrogen in the reactivity series like in the cases of like copper. This is because they are not able to displace the hydrogen ions in the acid. So that's the reason why it has to be 
in elements or, or metals that are above it in the reactivity series. So for example, if uh, hydrochloric acid reacts with zinc, it will form zinc chloride and hydrogen gas is given off. It reacts with magnesium, it forms magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas is given off. It reacts with uh, iron, it reacts to form iron 2 chloride and hydrogen gas is given off. So also because of the way it ionizes, it is also able to react with bases to form salt and water. So for example, if you react the acid with sodium hydroxide, you form sodium chloride and water. If you react the acid with oxides, for example, copper oxide, it will form copper chloride and water. And you see now, when you are reacting with copper, it's possible to react with copper oxide, but not copper metal. Copper metal is because that copper metal can't displace the hydrogen, but with oxide it's easier. It also reacts with carbonates and hydrogen carbonates to give off carbon dioxide and water. So the carbon dioxide, you will notice effervescence in this reaction. When the reaction occurs, you see a lot of bubbling and effervescence in the production of a colorless gas is given off. So if you were to test for this colorless gas, if you bubble it in lime water, it's going to form a white precipitate. So like calcium carbonate reacts with hydrochloric acid to form calcium chloride, water and carbon dioxide. Zinc carbonate reacts with hydrochloric acid to form zinc chloride, water and carbon dioxide. Then if you are using hydrogen carbonate, the reaction will still be the same. For example, sodium hydrogen carbonate would react with hydrochloric acid to form sodium chloride, water, and carbon dioxide. So dry hydrogen chloride is not particularly reactive and are ordinary conditions. So um, although it's very reactive uh, with metals, if burnt in it to form chloride and hydrogen gas. So like sodium plus hydrochloric uh, will form sodium chloride and hydrogen gas. So metals above hydrogen in the reactivity series react with hydrogen gas when heated. Uh, hydrogen chloride gas when heated. So if reacted with some metals, it forms uh, two chlorides. That is, for example, if reacted with iron, you form iron one, iron two chloride and iron three chloride. So these two chlorides exist. So hydrogen chloride, for example, reacts, uh, forms white fumes with ammonium chloride when reacted with ammonium gas. Actually, this is the chemical test for hydrogen chloride. So if you want to test for the presence of hydrogen chloride, we just introduce it. Uh, we introduce ammonia in the mouth of the test tube. You're going to see some white fumes. These white fumes tells you that there is presence of hydrochloric. So the white fumes are called ammonium chloride. So hydrogen chloride is decomposed also by oxidizing agent to give off chlorine. So for example, if you react hydrogen chloride with silix oxide, you form lead chloride, water, and chlorine. Remember, this is the preparation of chlorine, the one that we've just discussed in the previous lessons. So it also reacts with manganese oxide to form manganese chloride, water and chlorine gas is given. So you can see these concepts are like intertwining themselves. You learn uh, concepts uh, and then you have to marry them, like they are, they are intertwined. That way it helps you to understand them even, even more. So how do you test for chloride in the lab? You can use silver chloride. So to test the solution, we add silver ions. Uh, so we can add silver nitrate in the solution and then we acidify it with nitric acid. So the, you notice a formation of a white precipitate because of the presence of the chloride ions. So only silver carbonate and silver chloride can be formed as white precipitate. But if we add the acid, because remember we are adding the acid afterwards, silver carbonate is soluble, but silver chloride is not. So note this, this reaction. So first, we take the test solution, we add silver nitrate in the test solution. When we add silver nitrate, it forms a white precipitate in the first step. So we infer presence of chloride ions and carbonate ions. And then we follow this reaction with an acid. We add dilute nitric acid. 
the moment we follow it with the acid, this reaction either can the white precipitate can dissolve or the white precipitate cannot dissolve. So if the white precipitate dissolves, we know that the, the, the ions that we were testing were the carbonate ions. If it doesn't dissolve, it means it's a chloride ion. So for example, if uh, we add silver sodium chloride, we react it with silver nitrate, we'd form silver chloride and sodium nitrate. Uh, so that's why, where the white precipitate comes from. So this precipitate also dissolves in excess ammonia. So white, the white precipitate of silver chloride turns uh, violet when exposed to red light. So we can also lay, use lead ions because we know there is also lead uh, chloride. Remember we said all chloride ions are soluble except for silver lead ions. So if we add lead nitrate also and then warm, in this case now we have to use warming as a one that distinguishes. If we add lead ions in the solution, it forms a white precipitate. So the white precipitate can be carbonate or chloride ions, but if we warm and the white precipitate dissolves, then it tells us it's chloride ions. So only lead carbonate and lead sulfate and sulfite and lead chloride can be formed as a white precipitate. So when we were in firing, we will say it is carbonate ions, sulfite ions, uh, sulfate ions, and chloride ions present. But the moment we warm and it dissolves, we eliminate all these three and we are left with chloride ions. Only lead chloride dissolves on warming, unlike the rest, which are insoluble even on warming. So I hope you have been able to see that experiment. So for example, if our test solution was sodium chloride, if you add the lead nitrate, you would form uh, sodium nitrate and lead chloride, uh, which is a white precipitate that uh, dissolves on warming. So that brings us to the end on hydrochloric uh, gas on an acid. And you notice the qualitative analysis is coming in the theoreticals. Make sure you are able to sit down and now do that separation of anything that we have mentioned as part of qualitative analysis. Separate it because it's going to form the basis of the qualitative question in paper three. So in the next lesson, we are going to be looking at the large-scale production of hydrochloric acid. So see you in the next lesson.